Welcome back everyone to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is going to be another installment of the Buyer's Guide series and for this installment we're going to talk about the Academy Roadrunner. This is an interesting car. On an earlier video I went over the World Engine's Rockbuster. This is effectively a clone of the Rockbuster which in turn is a clone of the, well I guess it's hard to say but either the Hornet or the Grasshopper, depending on which level of Rockbuster or Roadrunner that you purchased. These were interesting cars as though they were complete copies of the Hornet, they did have a few very interesting unique features. For example, the front bumper is unique to the Rockbuster, the Roadrunner, and the Cyclone. The Cyclone being made by Panda or in some cases Vericom, depending on the region it was purchased. These cars also came with this front sway bar, which is very, very nice. They also had, I can show it to you reasonably well here, they also had a small spring mechanism here. There you go. This mechanism worked significantly better than Tamiya's little torsion springs that were buried in this area here. And these seem to be on all of the Rockbusters and Roadrunners that were their higher end version. You could get two flavors of the Roadrunner. You could get the Grasshopper version, which had friction shocks at the rear and did not have the, the uh, rear transmission articulation. This version here, as you can tell, has some anodized aluminum shocks at the rear, very similar to what the Hornet had. In fact, I have found them to be quite excellent units as these are very easily rebuildable. The car also came with your front pogo springs. These have been upgraded to UG versions, vintage ones, but usually you would find a stock to me a pogo stick. And the Nerf bars, again, would normally be the plastic ones found on the Tamiya cars. In the case of this one, they have been upgraded. These cars usually were found with chrome wheels. However, the Roadrunner 2 had a larger diameter gold wheel, a quite a lovely unit. They were the same size tires that would be used on a Grasshopper 2. In this case here, the front and rear tires are incorrect for this car. However, I did happen to have these interesting front tires, so I figured what the heck, and then I just threw some grasshopper tires on the rear. The body, like the Rockbuster, is unique to the two cars. This is an ABS body, and in my opinion, it is quite excellent looking. I think the curves on it are very nice. These tend to be made quite well. The rear wing and the front bumper seem to be made out of a fairly flexible material. The rear wing, in fact, is yellow. I just painted it blue because I don't like the, the box art yellow bumper with the yellow wing. In fact, I don't like this yellow bumper at all. Box art decals are on this car. However, the box art color is normally just apply the decals to the white ABS body. Decals are a little bit uniquely placed here as I wanted to put a number on this car. And uh, there's some sort of, this, this area here I think is quite strangely decaled out of the box, so I decided to update it just a little bit because I didn't quite like all of those uh, those little details. It also had, in fact, I'm going to show you right here, these decals are quite poor quality. You can see how badly the screen printing was done from the black, the white, and the red, how all those different stripes are different spacing. These are vintage decals, and I am not certain that these are available after market. The Rockbuster decals are, but I cannot be certain about these. The speed control is again unique to the Roadrunner. You have this little unit right here. Uh, like most of my cars, I do just kind of throw these in here for show, but I do have a Novak T1 ESC installed. This resistor cover is also factory to this car. Like the Tamiya Hornet, these are going to come with this driver, which is the exact same screw that the Hornet used. Taking the body screws out, so like the grasshopper this thing has four screws that hold this body on and now we have a little more access to the chassis those of you that have watched my review of the rockbuster will have remembered that the chassis on that car had a very unique pattern on the sides it had a number of striations and that was unique to the rockbuster however the roadrunner although it does not have these patterns on this you'll note that the plate in the front where it had the Twin Stars and the Tamiya or the Grasshopper logo right here has been replaced with just some blanks. 
this shows that the mold was updated specifically to remove any reference to Tamiya. These chassis are usually quite hard to find. The one for the Roadrunner seems to be a little bit stiffer than the one that was used on the Rockbuster. That one was a very, very spongy chassis. Those of you who watched my Cyclone Buyer's Guide series will also know that that chassis was remarkably rigid. This one seems to be the most like the Hornet or Grasshopper chassis in terms of Tamiya quality. It's quite nice. There's no sharp edges. There's no uh, flash that's just kind of laying about like the Rockbuster had. And it seems to be a better ABS as opposed to what the Cyclone had. This one has some light usage marks kind of over here, but overall it's in pretty good shape. On the bottom, you'll see the trademark Roadrunner battery door with this little waffle pattern, as well as these arms and this arm brace with that same circular pattern. The transmission, much like the Rockbuster usually will have these striations here. However, a friend of mine does have a new inbox one of these that does not have this transmission. I suspect when it comes to these cars, you get what you get. Same with this motor cover. It is a bit unique to the Rockbuster and to the Roadrunner. And again, you can see that these transmission halves are very different from the stock Tamiya one. I want to say that these have the same gears, but they simply don't. The gears on this on this here uh, have very poor tolerance, and it's very difficult to put ball bearings in these gears. You need to do a little bit of reaming out to get the ball bearing to fit. Motor also is for the Roadrunner. It just has kind of a gold color. I don't know if it's in... No, it is a Mubuchi. It is a Mabuchi. I don't know why this one has this gold color. The Tamiyas seem to not have that usually. This car I will be testing with the uh, very vintage Aristocraft high-tech receiver and servo. And here is the radio that I'll be using. I've had this radio since, I think, 1995, and it's an excellent unit. Well, I think it is time to take this thing for a spin and see how it runs. If you remember the Rockbuster video, you'll notice the transmission on this car is infinitely better than the one on the Rockbuster. However, it's still not to that Tamiya quality. These cars do all have ball bearings. You'll notice though that the front and rear wheel nuts are most certainly not standard Tamiya units. These are not M4 axles. You can see here that the thread pitch, as well as the diameter on the spindle and the front, as well as the axle on the rear is a much higher thread pitch. I almost want to say it is an M5, however, I never have really investigated these much further. Usually you can find these because these knuckles have black molded plastic and not the standard white that Tamiya uses. These also usually have a black ball cup. Let's take her for a run.
I think you folks all know me by now. With these cars with these hard plastic bodies, I do take it easy. Uh, scratching these is not okay with me, but they are all driven quite regularly. And this is actually a fairly nice car to drive. The question, of course, is do you want one? And that is, as usual with these clone cars, not an easy question to answer. Although these are a great car for a, a collector to pick up and put on their shelves, uh, very inexpensively, that time is really kind of gone at this point. This car, I think I bought practically new in box for, uh, I want to say it was under 60 or $70. This was about five or six years ago. The time to find these cars cheap now is getting harder and harder. A nice example will set you back around $200. And remember, this is for a car whose quality pales in comparison to the Tamiya, um, you know, original. On top of that, genuine Rockbuster or even Roadrunner replacement parts are getting harder and harder to find. These arms are pretty easy to come across, but the battery doors, the transmission halves, and most importantly, the chassis are getting to be impossible to locate. As a runner, my recommendation is get yourself a Hornet or get yourself a Grasshopper. These serve no purpose as runners any longer. It used to be that you could buy one of these very cheap because that's no longer the case. They've lost their appeal. Unless you can find a rather battered example for a very, very good price, I would steer clear. A battered example that may need a chassis and arms and just throwing some, to me, a Hornet parts in there is absolutely acceptable for a car that is going to be driven aggressively. There was a time where these bodies were rather available. In fact, even on the more heavily abused ones, the bodies seem to fare remarkably well. Mainly, I believe it's because the roof is very domed, so it deflects a lot of the damage, and these rear wings are ridiculously flexible. So I think these elements help these things to usually last a bit longer than um, you would assume a car of its quality would. If you are a collector, these are a great car to have on your shelf if you're like me and obsessed with the Hornet or the Grasshopper. These knockoff cars I am utterly infatuated with because I just love the idea that someone loved a Hornet that much to go ahead and make an example that is worse in every single way and yet is still basically a Hornet. So if you are a collector, yes, get yourself a nice Roadrunner. Uh, wait till you can come across one that's in reasonable shape. Most likely your biggest trouble is going to be finding one that has an unused sticker set or that has the correct battery door. Those are the two hardest things to find with these, at least until someone starts to remake the sticker set. If you are someone that just wants a basher, don't waste your money on a Rockbuster or a Roadrunner or a Cyclone. Get a Hornet. These are better in every single way. The plastics are better. The tolerances are better. The parts availability is better. Get a Hornet. I hope you liked this video. I know a lot of these knockoff Tamiya videos seem to be very popular. People like to hear about the uh, cars that are Tamiyas but aren't Tamiyas, like the Rockbuster, the Roadrunner, the Cyclone, and a couple of the other Grasshopper clones that I've, I've gone over. Academy even did a car called the Academy Galaxy Buggy, which was basically a Grasshopper. I mean, even down to the body, it was a Grasshopper. These are all very unique cars and highlight a time in the RC industry where the youngsters out there wanted to get their hands on an RC car. They were able to spend a little bit more to get out of the Tyco, Nico, and Tandy range and get themselves something a little bit faster and a little bit more uh, easy to repair. So the Rockbuster, the Roadrunner, these are cars that show us that there was a time where people wanted to get a car that was really inexpensive and would do anything at all to do this. By today's standards, this was a 60 or $70 kit in the 1980s. Um, today, that would still put it at significantly over some of the inexpensive but, but vastly superior Chinese-made kits that are available on the market today. I do not believe this was a Chinese-made kit. I believe that Academy made this in Korea, much like the Rockbuster. Unfortunately, little information is known about these vehicles. I hope you enjoyed this. You know, I, I, I love talking about these cars, and I've got lots and lots of other cars to talk about. So if anybody has any kind of 
uh, interest in hearing about the Grasshopper 2 or the Frog or the Fast Attack or the Blackfoot or the Bruiser or the Brat and kind of get to know some elements of the car before you're looking to purchase one either as a runner or as a shelfer by all means post in the comments and I'll gladly go over those videos. I really appreciate everybody watching please feel free and add me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering on both and check out my Shapeways page which is also Ampro Engineering once you get to shapeways.com. <laughs>